Jasper, Texas, a sleepy town on the eastern edge of the Lone Star State. That is, until disaster strikes. June 7th, 1998. A 49-year-old African-American man named James Bird Jr. was walking home from a family member's bridal shower. Three white men, John William King, Sean Allen Berry, and Florence Russell Brewer, offered him a ride in Berry's Ford pickup truck. James Bird made the biggest and last mistake of his life. He accepted. It was an emotional trouble. You know you needed to be there, but it's very hard to hear those details and to see the clothing that he was wearing. Some of the things we didn't know, and that was especially hard to deal with. It's like reliving that experience all over again. It's like it just happened. James Byrd Jr. was a kind soul, well known in town as Purple Rain. James Byrd Jr. was a sweet soul who loved to play the piano and sing, according to family members. Today, they released this home video showing him the way they remember him. No song that he loves is Al Green and Purple Rain. He loves all that kind of song. When he hears him, he just goes off. He kept the whole community laughing. Oh, you laugh at the way he walked. He was an ambitious man with big dreams, but all those dreams came to an end on June 7th, 1998. The journey to his death began near Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. It is alleged that James Byrd was picked up by three white men. These suspects drove him to a wooded area on the outskirts of town. The three men harassed and beat James Burt. Some accounts say they urinated on him and painted his face black with a spray can to make obvious the motivation for their crime. They were having fun. They were acting like they were just having a good old time. They were laughing and joking and acting like they were having a good time. Sean Allen Barry, 2003. They took a logging chain and tied it around Bird's ankles. While he was still conscious, they dragged him for three miles down a dark country road. Medical reports later showed that he was conscious for the first two miles, struggling to keep his head from being smashed on the hard ground, and to keep himself alive. Finally, Bird's misery ended when his head was severed from his body, as well as his right arm. William King and Brewer left James Bird's torso outside of the Black Cemetery in Jasper, as if it were not already clear why they had done this to such an innocent man. The three murderers proceeded to attend a barbecue that evening. I was going to the Texas State Police Olympics in Dallas. It was on a Sunday morning, and I left my house about 7 o'clock in the morning when they called me. They just said they had a body at a, by a cemetery in the road, and the first indication was it may have been a hit-and-run traffic accident. It appeared that a front end of this vehicle had got bumped and canted and it appeared to be a, a tire mark similar to a yaw mark coming in and I followed that the entire crime scene thinking that it was a tire mark. What I was thinking this is going to be the hit, easiest hit and run wreck that we'd ever worked because we were going to be able to follow that trail all the way to the guy's house. We got to notice in, uh, uh, that the, the track that was on the road was not was not a rubber tire track, that it was a brown, dark substance, but it wasn't tire tracks. And uh, the further we went, the, the more my heart was beating because things weren't as I was thinking they, they were. Body parts and clothing were strewn across Huff Creek Road on the morning of June 8th. Among the 75 separate pieces of flesh and fabric were a few items belonging to the perpetrators, including an inscribed cigarette lighter. From this, local officials deduced the identity of the murderers. John William King and Lawrence Russell Brewer had served time in prison contemporaneously and had in that time joined a white supremacist gang, allegedly for protection within the prison walls. Less than 24 hours after the crime was committed, the police were able to declare the murder a hate crime and called in the Federal Bureau of Investigation for assistance. I was baffled. I couldn't understand it. Renee Bird, daughter of the victim. I kind of had an out-of-body experience because being an oldest child, you want to protect your parents under any circumstances. 
I felt like I betrayed my dad because I couldn't help him when he was scared and isolated and I just felt bad that I wasn't there and I couldn't protect him. He had been ripped out from my life. Ross Bird, the victim's son. We're not hating, we're hurting. James Bird Sr. Trial is a heart-wrenching experience for many, especially the family. Bird's own son, Ross Bird, could not bring himself to attend. Three men were escorted to the Jasper County Courthouse on June 7th. Much of the testimony and evidence presented in the case was particularly gruesome, ranging from personal testimony from people who knew the three to photographs of Bird's scattered body parts and markings of where they were found. Almost none of Bird's family could stand the experience and left at some point during the trial. The first of the three men, John William King, had most evidence stacked against him. He was in a white supremacist group and bore many tattoos, such as a black man hanging from a tree, Nazi symbols, the words Aryan pride, and the patch for a gang of white supremacist inmates known as the Confederate Knights of America. As if that wasn't enough, there was testimony by his boss and his roommate confirming him as a racist and claiming that he said such things as, Blacks are different from whites and are taking over everything. The second man, Lawrence Russell Brewer, was in the same white supremacist group as King. His defense attorney claimed that he only joined out of regard for his safety in prison. However, a psychiatrist testified that Brewer did not appear repentant for his crimes. The final man accused in the trial was Sean Allen Barry, who had the least evidence to prove his guilt. He claimed that Brewer and King were responsible for the entire crime and that he had nothing to do with it. However, Brewer claimed that it had been Barry who had cut Bird's throat. Due to a lack of evidence against him, he was able to leave with a life sentence in prison, while the other two were sentenced to death. Brewer and King are currently on death row at the Polensky Unit in Texas. The court case received national news coverage because of its similarities to the lynchings that occurred during Reconstruction. Oftentimes, lynchings would involve a brutal killing and a celebration afterwards, much like the barbecue attended by the three murderers. The murder of James Byrd seemed an eerie echo of the past. Could this be a reaction to the civil rights movement, just like the lynchings were a reaction to the Civil War? This concerned the American people. Were the racist ideas of the South from over 100 years ago still extant to their new society after the civil rights movement? From this newborn motivation by the people, the Matthew Shepard and James Byrd Jr. Hate Crimes Prevention Act was born. The act, made a law on October 28, 2009, expands on the 1969 United States Federal Hate Crime Law which protects against hate crimes based upon race, religion, ethnicity, nationality, gender, sexual orientation, gender identity, and disability in the U.S. It adds that hate crime prevention will have more funding and be investigated more thoroughly than ever before, and that the FBI must keep statistics on the number of hate crimes in the U.S. Tragic murders like that of James Byrd Jr. have been a part of our nation's past, even our culture, for centuries. However, with the aid of federal condemnation like the Hate Crimes Prevention Act and awareness foundations like the James Byrd Foundation for Racial Healing, we can hope to move past the hate, the discrimination, and the brutality toward a brighter future. <laughs>